Hey there, I'm Ryan, and I'm one of the many employee investors here at Greg Distributors. Today on Gear Up with Gregs, we're going to file away the myths and get to the truth about using hand files. Handmade metal files and stone rafts have been in use since the Stone Ages, making them one of the oldest known tools. Leonardo da Vinci even attempted to design a machine for manufacturing these multi-use devices. Today, files are generally used for finishing, shaping, and deburring a wide range of materials, including soft metal such as copper, aluminum, brass, bronze, and babbit. Hard metal such as alloy steel, plastic, cast iron, and hard rubber. The heat treated high carbon steel of a file means that they are tougher than the steel or other materials they are filing. The first things you need to know about a file is its basic anatomy. Let's start with the tang. The tang is the pointy end of a file where you will typically attach a wooden or plastic handle. Next is the heel located at the base of the tang. This is where the body of the file begins. Then you have the belly or the face where all the major cutting action happens. Some files have more than two faces and can feature different tooth patterns on each. Next up are the edges, which can be smooth or have teeth. Smooth edges are also called safe edges, as these edges will not affect the shape of the finished work. Depending on its shape, a file can have flat edges, tapered edges, or round edges. The point is at the opposite end to the tang. Despite its name, this end is often square, not pointed at all. However, this is the end that you point at your workpiece. Now, file length is measured from the base of the heel to the end of the point. The tang, or handle, is not included when measuring length. So a six inch file will measure six inches from the base of the heel to the end of the point. Speaking of length, that's one of the first things you'll consider when choosing a file. Generally, the longer a file, the coarser it will be, while shorter files are typically used for finer detail or smoothing work. Coarseness is the second thing you'll need to keep in mind when deciding on the right file. Coarseness is the number of teeth per inch length of the file, which means that the length of a file affects the coarseness, regardless of the cut. But wait, what's a cut? Well, to start with, most hand files are classified as either Swiss pattern or American pattern files. American pattern files are available in three grades of cut. Bastard, second cut, and smooth. The coarseness on American pattern files is determined by its length. For instance, a 6 inch bastard file is a lot finer than a 12 inch bastard file. Swiss pattern files are available in 7 grades of cut, ranging in coarseness from 00, 0 to 6, with 6 being the finest. Swiss files are generally smaller and finer than American files and are usually used for detail work by jewelers, watchmakers, model makers, and tool and die makers. The type of teeth on a file also affects the coarseness of its cut. Single cut teeth have only one set of diagonal teeth. They are often used with light pressure to produce a smooth surface finish or to put a keen edge on knives, shears, or saws. Double cut teeth have two sets of teeth positioned diagonally on the file face at opposite angles to each other. They are used with heavier pressure than the single cut for faster material removal. Rasps have a series of individual teeth formed by a single pointed tool. They produce a rough cut and are primarily used on soft materials such as wood, hooves, aluminum, 
and lead. The third aspect you'll want to consider when choosing a file is the shape of the file itself. After all, this is important for determining the final contours of the workpiece. Each file shape is ideal for specific tasks, though some of the choice comes down to personal preference. A triangular shape file is typically used for acute internal angles, tasks like cleaning out square corners and sharpening saw teeth. Flat files are used for general purpose work. Square files are used for enlarging rectangular holes, while round files are used for enlarging round holes. And half round files are dual purpose. The flat face can be used as a general purpose file for filing flat surfaces, while the curved face can be used for shaping grooves in the workpiece. File contour is another important feature when considering a file shape. A file can be either blunt or tapered. Blunt files have a constant width from end to end and are used when the item being filed is very uniform or consistent, so only one type of file is needed. A tapered file decreases in size from its heel to its point and may taper in width, thickness, or both. This type of file allows the user to vary the size of the file contact area without switching between different files, which makes them ideal for more complex work pieces. You may also need to keep in mind what type of material you are filing when choosing the correct file for the task. For instance, soft ductile metals require a keen edge and light pressure, while harder materials require duller teeth and more pressure. Materials like hard plastic and wood require a file with high, sharp teeth to promote a shearing action. It's important that you always follow proper safety procedures when using any tool, no matter how simple. Be sure to wear eye protection when filing, as small chips of material will be released from the motion. As well, never use a file without a tight-fitting handle. This is especially true for round files and those with sharp, narrow tangs. Serious accidents can occur by using the file with the tang exposed. Now, there are times you may find your files getting a bit dull. And one of the reasons why a file might not be cutting properly is that the wrong technique is being used when filing. There are three main ways to file. Straight filing, draw filing, and lathe filing. Straight filing involves moving the file lengthwise, either straight ahead or on a slight diagonal across the workpiece. The cutting stroke is the push stroke, which means the return stroke shouldn't touch the workpiece if you are filing correctly. So once you push the file forward, lift it off the workpiece and return it to the starting position. Be careful as too much pressure applied when straight filing often results in a rocky motion, which leads to a rounded surface on your workpiece. Draw filing is when you grasp the file at each end, pushing and pulling it across the workpiece. A standard mill, bastard file is typically used for this type of filing. However, this roughing down leaves small ridges that will have to be finished and smooth with a mill smooth file. Lathe filing is a process of stroking the file against a workpiece that is revolving in a lathe. This technique can be useful when truing a workpiece or quickly removing material. So long as you're sure to keep the file moving, it should never remain stationary when lathe filing. Also, care and attention and the proper personal protective equipment are essential for lathe filing. Another reason a file might not be cutting as well as expected is maintenance. Just like any tool, proper maintenance is needed to be sure your file is working to the best of its ability. First, protect the teeth. 
If you're not careful, you can get shelling on the teeth of a file. Shelling is a breaking of file teeth, usually caused by using too much pressure, reverse filing, filing sharp corners, or filing edges. Your files can also be damaged if they are stored with other metal tools instead of being hung individually or kept in a drawer with non-metallic dividers and enough room for little to no contact. Make sure to always store your files away from water, dirt, grease, and other debris. You also want to be sure to keep your file clean. Small filings can become wedged between the file teeth as it is used. This is called pinning. To keep your files clean, use a file card or wire brush to clean the file while you use it and after you're done. Never clean your files by hand. This is a good way to get a metallic sliver. Yikes! And if you find you're constantly getting a lot of pinning in your file, you can always chalk the surface to keep it from getting loaded with material. With a wide range of files available here at Greg Distributors, we're sure to have the right tool for your job. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave us a comment on social media or visit our website at gregdistributors.ca. Again, I'm Ryan, and thank you for keeping it Canadian with Gear Up With Greg. Now, if you excuse me, I've got some filing to do. <laughs>